Hey coders, what's up? It's Chris here, and today we're going to look at saving file data to the parse backend and retrieving it. So here I've got our Xcode project, which has the parse libraries integrated into it, and we don't have anything in the storyboard, and this is the viewcontroller.swift file. In the previous lesson, we were working on queries here in the viewDidLoad method, but I've erased all that code in preparation for showing you how to upload a file. And just to give you a quick recap, in case you're joining us for the first time in this parse series, we've created a contact class here in our parse backend, and in it we have two lines of data, we have an email key, first name key, and a last name key as well. And the scenario that I'm going to show you in this lesson is, for example, if we want to add a profile picture for one of our contacts. Now, I don't have to create another key, say for image or anything like that, because if you remember in Parse, if you set a key which doesn't exist, and then you save that object back to the Parse backend, it's going to detect that that key doesn't exist, and it's going to create that column or that key here in our data store. So first, we're going to want to, let's say, pull down a contact. So let's go back here, and we're gonna create a query to retrieve a contact. So I'm gonna say let, query equals pf query class name is contact now if you don't know how to do pf queries then i suggest that you look back a couple of videos in this parse series so that you can get caught up what we're going to do here is retrieve just the first contact i don't really care who it is because i just want to show you how to save an image and associate it with that contact so i'm going to say query dot get first object in background with block and this is just going to retrieve the first uh, object from the contact class or contact data store. And I open up this block, and here's the object. It's an optional parameter. So I'm going to type object. This is error. And inside the code, first we're going to check if there's an error. So if there is no error, if error is equals to nil, then we're going to go ahead and work with the data. And now we got to check if object actually got returned. So in case that the contact store is empty, then this returned optional is probably will be nil. So I'm going to say if let contact equals object, then we have a contact object. And just to remind you, it is a PF object class. What we're going to do is now, um, get the image data, set the image data to a key of the PF object, save the object back to the parse backend. So if this was a real app, we would probably work with the camera, allow the user to take a photo, and then take that image data. But since this is a demo, I have an image that I'm going to use that I'm just going to put in the image library, and we're just going to use this image. It's a smiley face that is supposed to represent our contact. I'm not even going to bother with the 2x or 3x sizes. Let's go back to the view controller. So let us first create a UI image. Let image, let's do that under here actually, under get image data. Let image equals UI image. Right, and we're going to use the named initializer. And let's use the name here. Make sure there are no typos. Smileyface.png. Actually, we don't need the PNG when we're working with uh, assets here. We just have to specify that asset name. So smileyface, like that. So if I remember correctly, this initializer actually returns an optional UI image because in case it can't find that asset, it's going to return nil. Let me just double check. Yeah, so the return type is an optional UI image type. So we are going to have to, uh, let's say, let's make this a UI image optional type. And then we have to check if it actually successfully created an image first. So if let smile image equals image, then in that case, then we're going to get the image data so in order to get the data, we're going to use this method called UI image PNG representation. Returns the data for the specified image in PNG format. So we're gonna use that and we're gonna pass in a UI image. It returns an optional NS data. Okay, so let's do that. Pass in a smile image. 
and this is NS data optional. Since we know that this smile image is an actual image, right? We've tested it. If it's not nil here, it should return some data. So I'm not going to worry too much about checking if this is nil or not. Okay, so now let's talk about saving this image data into our parse backend. So in parse, you learn that objects are PF objects, queries are PF queries, and we have PF file for saving file data. So we're going to create a new PF file. So let file equals PF file. And we're going to go with this one here where we can specify a name and we can pass in the data. So for the name, we're going to call it smiley. Let's just say smiley face. And it's important to actually put the extension for the file here as part of the name because parse is going to use that to determine how to treat the data. Here we're going to pass in the image data. And because it's an optional type, we have to add the exclamation mark to unwrap it. Okay, so now we have this PF file, we got to attach it as a value to our contact, the one that we retrieved earlier, let's say contact profile, let's give it a new key profile photo equals file. And then finally, we got to save that back. So let's say save in background like that. So let's review what we've done here. We've created a query and we're going to get the first object from that store from the contact store. And once we check that we do actually have a contact object, we are getting an image. Now I just added an image to the asset library. So I created a UI image based off of that asset. Um, I checked if it was able to create that image and we extracted the data and we converted that into an NS data type. And then we created a PF file from that data. And finally, we assigned that PF file into the profile photo key of the contact that got returned. And then we're going to save that contact back into the parse backend. Let's use save in background so that we can see if save in background with block, I mean, so that we can detect when it's done. So result error. And in here, let's just say print done. So it's going to run this print statement after it's successfully saved it. I'm going to run the project and I'm going to wait for that message to pop up here. Okay, so done just showed up. Let's check our back end and parse and see what's going on. I'm going to refresh it. So let's scroll to the right. There you go. So it looks like the object that was returned in our code was John Smith. And here you can see that the new key has been added profile photo. And for John, uh, I didn't mean to click that. John, you can see smileyface.png was saved. So I want to point out that in this example, we've learned how to save PNGs or images up into our parse backend. The thing is, saving any sort of file, whether it's a sound or a movie or another type of media is done the same way with this PF file class. Now let me show you how to retrieve that data to retrieve that image, I mean. So let me comment out this code, you gotta be careful here with all of the brackets. So this here is the chunk of code that we wrote today. Now let's write how to retrieve the image. And let's add a comment up here. This was how to save the image and associate it with a contact. So here I'm going to do another query like query equals PF query class name is contact. And this time I want to retrieve john specifically because we know that he has an image, I'm going to say now if you watch the query constraint videos, you'll know how to do this, I'm going to say where key, uh, let's say, equal to, so I'm going to look for the first name is equal to john. Now this only works because I know that I only have one john in my contact data store. Uh, but if you had multiple Johns, then it probably would return a whole data set. So let's do query dot get first object in background with block. So there's my object, this one is error. And then here, let's check, check for errors. If error equals nil, if let contact equals object. So we're checking if the object returned is also nil. So in here we have a contact named john. 
And John that gets returned has all of these properties, it has first name, last name, email, and these are strings. And so this data is automatically available to me if I say something like, you know, print contact first name, for example, then I would have John printed out. But for profile photo, because it's a file, it's not automatically retrieved. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to say contact the profile photo. I'm going to have to get this, uh, assign this to a constant named file, and it's going to be a type of PF file. And then I'm going to have to retrieve this by calling a method called get data, uh, get data in background with block like that. And let's open that up and it returns optional data, optional error. So let's do data error. And in the code here, let's check if there is an error, if error is equals to nil. And if let image data equals data, then successfully retrieved the data. And then if I wanted to show this image in my user interface, I can create a new UI image. So let image equals UI image. And I would use the one where we can pass in an NS data and we would just assign image data into that. And then I could assign this UI image into a UI image view to display it on my view. So that's how you go about retrieving the file. Now, if it was any other sort of data, for example, a sound file or something like that, if you were going to play the sound, AV audio player has initializer methods where you can pass in a piece of NS data as well. And you will be able to initialize your AV audio player and then play the sound. Okay, so this chunk of code shows you how to retrieve the file. So I hope that was pretty straightforward for you guys. There is also a lot of good information in the documentation for parse. I'm going to remind you under files right here talks about PF file talks about images and also talks about progress, which we didn't really get a chance to cover in here. Uh, but essentially, when you save the PF file or you get the data for the PF file, there is also one of the methods has a progress block uh, parameter where you can specify a chunk of code. It's going to give you the percent that it's done. So you have a chance to update any progress bars or anything like that with the percent to done parameter. So take a look at this documentation, go to parse.com slash docs and go to the iOS guide and then scroll down to file right here to read all about that stuff and to review what we've talked about in this lesson. I hope you guys had fun. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and please share it if you found it useful and you think that anyone else can benefit from this. Thanks again and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.